Is there some sort of enchanted article of clothing that could sort this out for me? Oh, I'm so excited! And now, I feed! Well, I've been holding off. Hi, I'm Kitty Monk, and I'm here to talk to you about the Coven system. Or more specifically, my issues with it. Which is ironic, because one of my favorite aspects of the show is the Coven system. When I first started watching The Owl House, I didn't think it was going to be the next big Disney show. It felt like a Gravity Falls clone. Only Mabel would be the main character, and every single episode would feel like the last Mabel corn. The first and second episodes didn't do the show any favors. The intruder was what piqued my interest, but the Coven system was what convinced me the show had potential. But there's no such thing as a perfect product. I tried jotting down my thoughts, then I figured it'd be better to just make one big video on it, rather than a bunch of little mini ones. So without further delay, let's begin. The Boiling Isles is governed by the Coven system. There's nine main covens. Plants, Illusions, Potions, Oracle, Abominations, Bard, Healing, Construction, and Beastkeeping. They're run by the Emperor's Coven, which consists of Emperor Bellows, and handpicked witches who are stated to be the best of the best. Each coven has their own official, and they're run by a head witch. In school, you're placed in one of the nine separate tracks, specifically to join a coven when you come of age. Not gonna lie, I'm a little jealous. I double major in English and WGS. Why do you need to learn about math? And again, there are moments when students mingle with those in other tracks, so maybe you do have to take certain core subjects. This is nothing out of the ordinary, especially for YA media. In Divergent, you had to join a faction when you turned 16 or end up on the fringe of society. However, the Yellow House takes it a step further. When you join a coven, all your other magic is sealed away. From now on, that kid will only be able to make illusions. And you have to do it, otherwise you get branded a wild witch. Room pluses, you can still do things like elemental magic or basic spells, but if you want to build a house and you join Bard, sorry, you're SOL. I like this idea. However, I have a few problems with it. My first problem is pretty minor, so I'm going to start with it first. A question that I get asked a lot is what coven would I join? The answer for that is Oracle, but I think a better question is what coven shouldn't you join? I'm going to Say potions, which is ironic because if I didn't choose Oracle, I'd totally go with potions. But I don't get why it exists. It's like the common equivalent of being a philosophy major. How is Basha considered worthy of associating with a blight if she's just brewing stuff? People say Abominations is the worst track because you're just making clay people. Did he does Requiem and Eclipse Lake proved me wrong? I know Lilith and Ida were potion track students, it's just. I don't see a reason for it. You know that old saying of anybody can cook? Well, anybody can do potions. Ida can use magic and she was still able to make extra money selling them. I may not be at full power, but I can still make potions. Even Lewis can do it and she's a human. See? Potions are fun! You can spend the rest of your life studying this, right? That's why Bum put her in that track. He wasn't trying to be malicious, it's just she doesn't need a bile sack to turn on a beaker. Only reason it didn't stick was she didn't have any longing to be there. Yes, the potions track. You humans are filled with liquids, right? At most, you would need magic to get the ingredients, but Lilith still managed with Hootie's help. And I'm willing to bet certain things you can always go buy at the store. No wonder Eater repelled so hard as a kid. She was probably so bored. I guess as a potion student, you learn how to make various potions. I mean, come on. But they have cookbooks, so it's obviously not top secret. One of my biggest hopes before the show ends is they find a way to redeem the potions coven. Bard, Beastkeeping, and Abominations all got the special treatment. I think potions should be a piece of cake. Now let's get on to my biggest problem, which I think is gonna be pretty unpopular. Before we do, we have to talk about something called early installment weirdness. Do you ever watch a show and for the first few episodes things are a certain way and then they ignore it later on? Maybe they dress differently or sound differently? There's some character who appears once and never again, like with the Bat Queen? Yeah, yeah. Mama is I, and I is the Bat Queen. Palace man born through emotion. I do not sense any conviction from you. That soft retcon is what we call early installment weirdness. Some people hate it, but for me, unless it's super obvious you're retconning, like Damon Salvatore knowing how to control fog, or Steven Universe having all those magical MacGuffins, I don't mind looking the other way, or at worst, making up a headcanon. Storylines and ideas do change. The Owl House is no different, and unlike most shows, I have to praise them that a lot of the time, they found a way to incorporate it into the story. In the pilot, they say, They just want to be themselves. Why does everyone think that being a weirdo is so bad? To this end, Luce meets a bunch of witches who warden Raph in prison in the conformatorium. In the pilot, it's like a mental hospital. Let this be a lesson to all of you. 
There's no place in society for you if you can't fit in. In later episodes, it's a fancy prison. I'd argue it's early installment weirdness, but knowing what we know now, there are reasons they were in there that go beyond being weird. They're political hostages. Katia writes fan fictions. She can speak out against Emperor Bellows and persuade the general populace. I mean, when dictators take over, writers are one of the first people to go. Plus, she's a bat. Tiny knows what's making conspiracy theories. The last thing Bellows wants is somebody stumbling on what's so bad about him and possibly convincing others to do the same. What if Bellows is really a human and he really can't talk to the Titan? Convention is one of the most extreme cases, and I really can look the other way. Truth be told, it used to be one of my favorite episodes, and it's still a little enjoyable, but ever since I started doing YouTube, I can't help but see it for its flaws. There's so much early installment weirdness and big lipped alligator moments. Amity is still a bully, but she was slightly nice to lose, so we're gonna ignore that. <gasps> Oops. That was an accident. Lilith is teaching Amity and possibly has other students. Hmm, it seems your student has met my strongest protege. The Oracle Coven is called the Fortune Teller's Coven. Destiny, <laughs> I'm not paying for it's free. Although, in perspective, maybe she's just a weirdo who stole their symbol. She didn't seem to know that much about Toothsaying. <gasps> I mean, I knew it. The convention is another issue. It exists so witches can figure out which coven they might want to join. They treat it like a college fair or a major and minor fair. A job fair for witches! Ida, can we go? Only, the event itself seems pretty sadistic when you start to think about the implications. Yes, it's so you can learn more about each coven, but for one, you're training every day at school, and the whole point is to join that one coven. It's not like Divergent when you take the test at 16, and beforehand, you don't study. According to the rules, a good witch needs to hocus focus. You can only pick one of the nine tracks. In American school, until college, you have very little control over what classes you can pick. So of course, when you get to college, you're not going to have the best idea of what you want to do. Boiling Isles? <laughs> Studying multiple tracks at once? No one does that. Since the only people there are high school age, they should know by this point which coven they're going to be in. Besides, when joining the Abomination Coven when you spent your entire life training to be a peacekeeper, kind of silly? Willow had no talent with abominations, imagine how her life would have been if she ended up joining. Sure, Gwendolyn switched to beastkeeping, but we don't know if that's even still allowed. I joined the Beastkeeper Coven. I thought they surely would know what to do. But the Beastkeepers told me the curse couldn't be tamed. The Emperor's Coven's a different story, obviously, but think about it for somebody like Willow. Oh, I so want to join the Plant Coven. The convention makes it look so fun. Oh wait, you can't. Sorry. At the event, Lewis is absolutely stunned. Was I even alive before now? Those are the main nine covens, but there are hundreds of other ones you can join. Wait, what? There's Flower Coven, Artist Coven, Big Dog Coven, Small Cat Coven, Tiniest Cat Coven. So, there are hundreds of other covens? Throughout the episode, the other covens exist in the background, mostly as jokes. And like most fairs, they throw free stuff at you like a teenager in a horror movie. Uh, ba -da -ba -da -ba. Things that are free, people are giving offerings to me. I. Love. Offerings! What did I miss? After this episode, those hundreds of other covens never appear again. They have no impact on the plot, they're not in the background. The Hexide students are never like, I want to join the Healing Coven. Well, I want to join the Bad Girl Coven. I guess that's why they're so desperate about handing out free stuff. It's the only way they get people to join. Cupcakes in my tummy tum make the king say yummy yum. So will you join the Baker's Coven? Hmm, <laughs> nope. When Bellows reveals the Day of Unity to the Coven Leaders, it's only nine Coven Leaders. As heads of the nine Covens, we celebrate your efforts to complete this plan. And Convention is an incredibly plot-relevant episode. It sets up so much, so the early installment weirdness sticks out like a sore thumb. I guess the reason we never see them again is it's easier for the writers to keep track of a dozen groups instead of 12,000. If you're watching that episode, I have one question to ask. Why isn't Bellows promoting this? By having hundreds of smaller covens on top of the main ones, Bellows would have a better way to control people. Something I give season 2 is they showed there was tons of potential for a coven. Abominations aren't just goop monsters. Peacekeeping isn't just watching animals. You might argue it makes them overpowered, but it could be a reason why nobody really thinks Bellows is a bad guy. At times, I thought Ida's ramblings were a little too over the top, since nobody really seems to suffer under the system. Control all wild magic through his coven system. He ordered my capture years ago because I refused to fall in line. 
I never joined a coven for a reason. Sure, it's like a fun club for witches, but you're also giving up your magical independence to be part of a crooked system. Sure, if you don't join, that's a different story. But nobody ever seemed unhappy because they joined. He is a criminal who occasionally does illegal things, like destroying property or stealing. Of course you would scapegoat somebody. It seems like I'm just being nitpicky, but I really praise the writing staff. It shows how good of an idea the system is. It got me, the viewer, to side with it, knowing its whole purpose is to control. Yet, by including the smaller covens, the harm would be way more obvious. If you join the Baker's Coven, there's nothing much you can do besides bake. Maybe you could do elemental spells, but you'd be better off joining potions. I know I spent the past five minutes trashing the system. Despite this, I think the writers haven't totally forgotten about these hundreds of other covens. Season 2 Beast Premiere is entitled Follies of the Coven Day Parade. I have a feeling Bump or whoever, maybe Amity or Ida, will explain the system more clearly, or say why we never hear about those other covens. It's not going to be for a few more months, so I'll get my thoughts here. The hundreds of other covens? They're like obscure or college majors. Sure, you can major in Shakespeare, there's nothing stopping you. Technically though, you'd arguably have more job prospects and more college choices if you became an English major and then focused on his work. Therefore, the smaller ones still exist, but they lack influence and members. Otherwise, they're like subsidiaries or areas of specialization. The main nine are an umbrella, the others just trickle down. Think, he's an endodontist and I'm an orthodontist. We're both dentists. We just specialize in different parts of teeth. I hope that clear things up, and I do hope they'll touch more on this as time goes on. I'm interested in what we'll see.